with it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, hello everyone. Welcome to Ready or Not. I'm Greg. And I'm Maggie. Welcome back. Um, for you guys, it has been... No, no time at no all. No time at all. <laughs> for us, it has been several, have several months. Well, <laughs> let me explain. One, we're poor. Like, let's just get that out there. Like, we're, we're not poor, poor. We very much are doing well for ourselves. But... With the, I, I am not intelligent enough to code an RSS feed website and stuff like that, so we had to pay for one. And what was between school and current events and events coming up, it was just not possible. And then I got a decent tax return. And I was like, screw it. Let's go ahead and do it. It's 100 bucks. Why not? And we did it so that we're able to upload every week, every Monday. So from the last time we recorded, which was episode four, mm-hmm. we're on episode five now, probably two months out. So we're going to give you guys like this. Usually we don't do this isn't going to be a consistent thing where we're just waiting a while then coming back and updating you guys. But for this episode, we usually do topics and stuff. But for this one, we're like, hey, let's just give a rundown of what the last crazy two months have been for us. Yeah, I feel like it's been longer than two months. It's, but... it's, I think it's been two months since our last recording or at least somewhere around there. So as you guys heard a thud, it was me pushing the cat on the floor who is just not... Okay, there we go. <laughs> Anyways, hi Maggie. Uh, and it's not like we haven't seen each other. We're um, we've got a lot of stuff we're, we we're getting into. Just a, a whole hell of a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, which where do you want to start? Let's start with the wedding because that's okay. the first event coming. Yeah, up. actually, is it the first event if we're counting the downstairs? Um. Well, that's been yeah. We'll start with the downstairs. Okay. Well, no, because that's going to lead us. That's going to lead us. Okay, so, <laughs> so it's just oh, we'll okay. start with our wedding. So Greg and I got engaged a year and a half. Oh, a year and a half ago. Yeah, and we didn't really like start wedding wedding planning until I feel like it was recently. First of all, I know you never hear this, and this isn't me trying to brag, but I have done a. Huge chunk of this planning. Yes. I will say Greg has been like on it. He's been finding reasonably priced vendors. He's been doing amazing. The wedding business is like a multi-billion dollar business. And when you're both in school and trying to figure things out, you don't have multi-billion dollars to (laughs) spend on a wedding. Um, We had honestly, we had seriously considered eloping for the longest time. However, we, you know, we talked about it and hopefully we're only getting married one time. And this will be it for us. We want to make it a fun day. Yeah. It's going to be a very small wedding. But there is a lot of ins and outs that I didn't even know went into wedding planning. Honestly, I didn't realize how stressful it was going to be. Um, But he has been a huge help. He has been This has been, I think, the most stressful thing I've ever done in my life. Well, actually, I can't say It's a lot. It's like top five. (laughs) It's a lot. It's so much. So for you couples out there who really love each other and you guys want to spend the rest of your lives together and you want to get married, just (laughs) freaking elope. Don't worry about it. It's too. It's and and it never once has. I mean, wedding planning has caused arguments, but not like full fledged arguments. No, 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 nothing crazy. Like it's just been like, I guess. Okay, so I I'm not saying like I am anywhere near a wedding expert, but I have been to more weddings than I feel like you have been to. Oh, absolutely. And so I know the ins and outs of what should be involved in weddings and like what is optional or really, I mean, it's your day. You can do whatever you want, but there's like traditional things that I want and things that are not traditional that I want. But then I also want your feedback. What is this? And you're like, honestly, I don't care. (laughs) Well, because here's the thing, like in, in just, just pure, sometimes I really just don't care. If I was really passionate about something, I would be like, Hey, like, here's what I, here's what I think we should do. Here's my idea. But for the most part, I'm like, like, what do you want? This is like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm going to like it no matter what. You're like, this is your show. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, here for it. <laughs> here, you steer the ship. I'll tell you if there's an iceberg nearby. Like, that's yeah. the best I'm going to be able to give you. But I have, I feel like I have chosen our photographer. I've chosen our, our DJ. And I found, I found a bunch of people for us. Yeah. That really fit our whole. Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, in group. the beginning, like when we first got engaged, I was like, the first thing we need to do, get a venue. Yeah. And we got that very quickly. That was We, one of, that we booked was very that quick, very yeah. fast. Uh, like within a month. I mean, literally, she just got her wedding dress. Oh yeah, I just got my wedding dress in and December. And we're four months out <laughs> now. Um. So yeah, well, it ta- it takes a while because my bridesmaids. I live eight hours away from three of my bridesmaids, and one of them lives five hours further than that. Yeah. So it's hard to get everybody in one 
space. One general location. Yeah. So it's, you know, it took a hot minute. But the psychology of wedding planning has been the most taxing because we're like, oh, like every month we're like, okay, we're going to get on the ball. We're going to at least do two to three things this month. And, and we, then we don't. And we, and, but here's like, sometimes we reach out to people and like your hairstylist has yet to contact me back. About booking? About booking. Like, oh. <laughs> like I, I got to contact her again. Like, hey, what's going on here? Because she's like, sorry, I've been very, very busy. And I forgot to get back to you. I'm like, fine. Like, cool, whatever. I just need to make sure you can come to our wedding. Like, are you going to be there? Yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, and I get it. You get busy. Hey, I get busy too. I don't respond to people. I get it. <coughs> but it's one of those things like, are, are you going to, are you even, is, are you interested? If you're not, just let us know and we'll figure it out from there. But she has been, um, she was nice. We met her. But the whole – because you're worried about so much. You're worried about like what's it going to look like? Is the food going to be okay? Is it going to mesh well? Like all this, all these little ins and outs and when you only have so much time to plan it. And I get it. I sound like a whiny baby because some people plan their wedding in like four or five months. Oh, yeah. Months. I know people that literally got engaged and were married within two months. But you have – they so have, Like how did y'all do that? <laughs> yeah. It's got to be – it's got to be money. Like they're just not worried about it. Yeah, hey, with gonna... us, like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have a budget, Yeah, but I think we're trying to make this as low cost as yeah. possible while still having it look nice. Yeah. Um, which I will admit, we are having a lot of help. My parents have, my parents, you know, were very graciously, they're paying for our venue, they paid for my dress. Yeah, and my... my... And my mom's helping out with decor. Yeah. Your and dad gave us a nice chunk of change to kind of cover, to kind of cover So we are very grateful. Else. Oh, absolutely. But, it, but it's, here's the thing. It's also even worse that it's not our money. Oh, yeah. And, like, because the, then so, I feel bad being like, hey. Yeah, well, not even that. It's like they gave us a budget. And my dad's been wonderful through this whole thing because he's like, he's like, oh, do you need this much? And then we're like, yeah, that should be fine. And he's like, but if you need this much, we'll give you this much. Yeah, he's like, like, he's like, so your budget, like, for example, let's say he's like, budget's 10 grand. We're like, okay. He's like, but if you need 30, like, <laughs> no, no, I don't need 30. Which, <laughs> listen, I'm, I, I get we're privileged in that aspect. Very much so. Oh, oh, absolutely. But it's still, but we're doing all the work here besides paying for Honestly, it. yeah. And I didn't want to spend the money on a wedding planner because yeah. I figured, you know what, like, I, if we They're could do it, let's do money. it. They're already yeah. giving us the money. Let's actually do it ourselves. Oh, absolutely. And I think, honestly, wedding planning is so stressful. I would never do this again. No. Um, um, and, I and think... for you people who have this as a business, <laughs> I, all the props. You, you. Ha- have earned my respect tenfold. Because this, I hate it. <laughs> I can't. The... And I told my my mom, I said, I'm so excited to marry you. Yeah. But God, I can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> <laughs> I tell everyone, they're like, "Are you excited for the wedding?" I go, "I'm excited for it to be over." Yeah. And the thing is, is I was more excited about our marriage than I am about our wedding. Yeah, day. I'm not. A- and the thing is, is like your dad. Even just now, like when we were on the phone, he's like, "Well, I don't want the food to be bad." And I said, "Honestly, it literally everything could go wrong, and I still would have a good day." I would literally be like, "Hey, like it could I be Chuck E. Cheese so pizza." Happy. Like, I yeah, I'll still be so happy because I get yeah. to marry. But Love by the life. way, I still think if if we this current caterer we're talking to, I think if that doesn't work out, I'm still like, hey, that Chipotle idea is just sitting back there. <laughs> what a great idea, um, you know. And that's probably like a grand no, itself. No, no. And make your own burritos. Make your own burrito Nobody bowl. Nobody wants burritos. But why not? It's a great option. You need more in options. burrito bowls. No, they got they got no. chips. No, they got guac. No. <laughs> no, spicy non spicy salsa. No, anyways, um, or, um, you know Chick fil A. No, yeah, but, but it's, it'll be, a, we're getting it'll, married on a Sunday. That's okay. <laughs> they, hey, they're the Lord's chicken. It's marriage. They're kind of, um, we'll wake it up. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of their thing. Um, but no, it's been, it's, it's, it's been stress, a whirlwind. It's stressful as that has been. It's, it's exciting. It's, it, I think I'm more excited for the after. The honeymoon part, getting and coming back, and like, hey, this is how it is. And a lot of people sit here and say, oh, nothing changes, like, everything changes when you're married. And I think there's the truth to that. But I also think that, especially in our situation, I don't think that's going to be the case. I, don't, I think there would be changes. But we already have a joint account. We already kind of share finances. We already share all we of our passwords. We do share finances. Yeah, well, like, we share our passwords. We share, you know, I don't have my section of this and you have your section of this. Like, we do have our individual We've stuff. been integrated for two, I mean, we'll be, it'll be two years by the time we get married. Yeah. So, like, I mean, we've been integrated for now. Like, the only thing is that we don't file our tax together and, that you know. I don't have your last name. You don't have my last name and we don't have the same health insurance. Like, that's it. Yeah, that's all. And other, so, like, will things change? Absolutely. I mean, it's a different, I mean, 
it's a different whirlwind. But for our predicament, I think a lot of people, when they get married, they don't have that shared stuff, even if they are living together. Well, and a lot of people still choose to not live together until they're married. Yeah. And I think that definitely would cause a very big change. Because I think with you, like, I'm not saying, like, I found out, like, oh, this dark secret once we moved in together. Yeah. I just think, like, you learn people's oh, habits. Oh, no, tell, bring the cats out of the bag. Bring about, bring the cats. What's, no, like, like, there's just, like, like certain things. Like, I'm super crazy about, like, dishes being in the sink. Yeah. But you have but no problem coming home from work and be like, <laughs> dump them all in the sink and then walk away. But you have no problem not rinsing the dishes because you think the No, dish- I put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> Just full of shit. No, I, I rinse them. Stuck I don't, I'm not going to sit there and wash them, hand wash them to you, put them in the dishwasher. My love, you have to wash off the cheese. You have I do. To, no, you rinse it and the cheese is still on it. Like, you have to scrub the cheese no, off. No, I don't need to scrub. Cheese does not run off like that. It sticks. It's sticky. Anyways. I love so, you. So, like, <laughs> like that or like... I like to close the toilet, like, all the way closed so the yeah. cats don't fall in. I just keep the... And you just keep the lid open. Like, you don't, like, leave the seat up. No, you I don't leave, leave the, the lid, open. lid open. And I'm like, oh, my God, the cats are going to fall in and drown. I, <laughs> like- I will say this, though. The, one of the biggest changes that make the most sense to me that I have incorporated now since we moved in together is closing the shower curtain. Yes, and I appreciate that. Like, I have never in my life done that. Why? I don't know. Because, like, well, first of all, when I lived with my dad, when my mom and my dad were together, they didn't have a shower curtain. The shower was, it was a, one of the, it was oh, a the, slide door the with, doors. like, the yeah. fuzzy gr- glass. And then when, with like, when my mom and my dad divorced, I mean, we had a shower curtain, but we just left the bitch open. open. So, like, it didn't matter. But, but, so, but when you close it, it helps, like. Air it out. For it to dry, yeah. not to, like, get mold and mildew. Which makes so much sense yeah. to me. And that's why I was like, you know what? That's I've never right. done that before. That, I was like that. Like, when you explained it to me, like, hey, you need to close it because it will get moldy. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I just never thought about it. Yeah. Um, and, and, yes, it's you know why I think my habit is with the dishes, though? is because I've never had a dishwasher either. Well, you also were the one that did all your dishes. So, yeah, like, like, it didn't I, matter if it piled up because you were the one that was doing it. I them. was the dishwasher. But here, I feel like I do the dishes <laughs> and majority I, of the time. And I do the laundry. Yeah, that's our so. trade-off. I hate laundry. You hate dishes. I can't stand dishes. <laughs> I think because... And let's just dive back because, again, this is just a catch-up episode. Yeah. Growing up, my mom... I would make me do dishes at such a young age. And then when I was like, you know what? I came up with this great scheme. I was like, you know what? If I don't know how to do dishes, she won't make me do dishes. <laughs> so I was like doing the dishes the worst I could do. And she was, okay, that's fine. I'll just take all the dishes out of the cupboards and then you can do all the dishes. And I'm like, I know how to do dishes. <laughs> so now that she knew how to do dishes, I was the, the mandatory dishwasher. No. Um, See my thing, but here's my thing. When I was growing up, we never had a dishwasher either. Yeah. And we did leave our dishes in the sink, and whoever's turn it was, it was normally my dad until it became like a chore thing, Mm -hmm. um, did the dishes. And the thing was, is once I, you know, became a nanny, and that became my job, I would have to make sure the kitchen was like clean and shut down before going to bed. And then I would get fussed out if there were dishes in the sink, but then like... The parents were literally leaving dishes in the sink after I would go to bed. And I'm like, you can't fuss at me for shit you did. Yeah, like, <laughs> You're a nanny, not a parent. That's nanny. what I'm saying. So, like, I think that's what made me super anal mm. about it was working there and being like, oh, my God, like, I get in trouble if there's dishes in the sink. So I just and then and then I like come to realize, you know, I actually really like having a clean kitchen. Yeah. I, it feels so nice to wake up in the morning and have a clean house. Come downstairs and be like, oh, look how clean the kitchen is. I will say this, and this is something that I'm very proud of us for. Since we moved. This house has never really been dirty. We have kept this house very respectable. Like, our last place... We I'm not go- saying it was, like, a dump, but, no, like, we, we were on different schedules. It, it was, was a different... Just, yeah. And honestly, it wasn't... It didn't feel like home. So, like, honestly, I don't really think we took care of it the way we were supposed to. No. Because we just were kind of like, ugh. Yeah. But I like coming home to a clean house. And that's something, that's another thing. Yeah. My mom, before we would travel anywhere, she was like, you know, leave the house really clean because then after a long trip, you come home and you're like, ah, came home to a clean house. Yeah. Well, for me, I mean, we never took trips, so. (laughs) Yeah. Well, for me, I just like coming home to a clean house. Yeah. So I like having things in their place. I like having the pillows made up on the couch and the blankets put away and like. I like coming home and being like, ugh, or waking up and being like, ugh, look how clean the house is. Yeah, it's it's been very nice, and yeah. I think we've we've really kept up with this place. And I think it's going to be easier moving forward too. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the, like, there's no the one thing I would say is we've been here for what six months now ish. Yeah, we're good. Six months. Six months, and we have not one stain on this carpet. No. Oh. Like compared to our last place where we had a, a couple. Well, stains. we also have a little green machine now. But. <laughs> yeah, but we haven't had. We've used it one time. Yeah. On this carpet. Or have been real easy with the carpet. We have, like, sure, we do eat in the living room still, which we're working on. We're we need waiting to get a table. To get a table. <laughs> we're waiting to get a table because we hear, rumor has it, it's a wedding gift from. Rumor has it, my grandpa's getting us one. <laughs> so we're kind of waiting on that, but it's been, we've kept the carpets really clean. Yeah. Besides the cats when they come in. Like they well, they don't up. really do that in here. Not here, but. No, the old place, they were nuts about it. Yeah. But. But, okay, so... So, wedding, that's our first thing. Wedding, wedding on the way, wedding. house, you know, stuff going on, wedding, don't get don't get married, uh, or get eloped, <laughs> one of the two, do not have a wedding, unless Art. it's like, you're unless you're rich, honestly, that's rich people <laughs> shit. Literally, wedding, what I've realized is wedding is rich people shit. I don't think it's rich people shit, because I have seen people, you know... No, full-fledged weddings. Oh, like bougie weddings? Not even bougie. Like, what we're planning it seems like rich people shit to me. But I don't feel like it's rich people shit because we're we're doing a good job at... Like, we have found a lot of small businesses that are still growing that... Like, for example, catering. Yeah. We were noticing catering companies were charging us anywhere from... Honestly, our base, the average was five grand yeah. for catering. But we're finding, oh, well, if we reach out to local, like barbecue places and do catering for you know our wedding's going to be like 50 people so if we reach out to them for 50 people it's literally like under two grand yeah so it's just finding what works like our like our bar she's like up and coming and she was willing to do it thousands of dollars cheaper so it just depends like where you're where you're finding it. Yeah. I don't care if you've been recommended one time or if you've been recommended 200 times. I really don't care. As long as you have a good rating, you're nice and you're professional, perfect. That's going to work for yeah. me. Yeah. And, and everybody, and we, good, good thing is that we've had phone calls with every vendor we've, we've talked oh, to. Oh, and they're also so nice. So we've had to actually sit there and talk to them and they see that, like, they know what they're doing. Oh, yeah, I've worked that place. Oh, yeah, I've worked this place. I've worked that place. So they kind of know, they kind of know they're, they're around the area that oh, they're, yeah. they're in. So, we got, we got a lot coming up. Um, Next, I kind of want to go into our house project. Yeah, um, yeah, so and so like, but here's but before we get married, I'm gonna be graduating. Oh yeah. So which is pretty cool. Um, I'll only be my bachelor. So I'm I'm currently that, so like I got stress of the wedding, stress of the other thing, and stress of graduating, and stress of okay now I need to continue my education. Where do I take that for? Yeah. Because like, um, if you guys don't know, before I plan on becoming a psychiatrist. But Maggie, in the current state that we live in, has to be here for at least, what, two years? Yeah, because i got to finish up school. I have another year. And then... Have to stay with the company. I have to stay with the company for a year after that to, like, say thank you for helping pay for school. Yeah. And then after that, I'm good to go. Yeah, and then we plan on moving down to where your parents are. Um, And so I don't want to get into a med school up here and then have... And then have us just kind of, like, sit around and wait. For another two years. I told him we would do if we needed to. But we just don't... We do not live close enough to a medical school, yeah. so he would either be commuting two plus hours every day, mm-hmm. or we would have to pack up and move again, which yeah. I don't want to do no. until we're moving into like our final our final spot or our first our first home. Yeah, like um, starter home. Yeah, let me just say this by the way, and I know this is going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. I hate Pennsylvania. <laughs> I really do. Like, I just do not like this state at all. And I'm, I mean, that's where we live. We live in Pennsylvania. I do just hate this state. I really do. And that you, like, you might sound like a hey, typical Ohioan, but Why I. Why do you hate Pennsylvania? I just the taxes are awful here. State tax is local tax is just god awful. The gas I think price. It's the area you the live. gas price. No, the gas prices are so high in Pennsylvania. It's high everywhere. But you can't just sit here and be like, oh, Pennsylvania has high gas. Nowhere else does. Like, no, I'm not saying Okay, just... Ohio is cheaper than PA, but that doesn't mean, like, PA is, like, the almighty gas price. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, California is definitely probably the highest. But I'm saying, like, it's just gas prices are so high. And I just... Be honest with you? Uh, I don't like the weather. I don't... The weather... Yeah, the weather sucks. But also, the company I work for uh, is... Not my favorite either. Yeah. So, anyways, um, besides that, no need. This isn't therapy for Greg. Uh, (laughs) 
<laughs> that's that was earlier today. But and we also don't really have a whole lot of family out here. No, we don't. Like you have your dad, and that's wonderful. Yeah, I have your parents. My yeah, my old. parents, my siblings, all of my friends that I'm really in touch with. Granted, I have a couple of friends here, but nothing like. Honestly, if I moved away, they probably wouldn't still be my friend. Probably. But I think, you know, moving to back home where I still have all of those... I mean, it's only one person, but <laughs> I hey, still have my friendship. But I get. To, I have to move away from my one person. He can come too. He, I wish... I mean, I would be game for that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like... And that's... And, you know, it's compromise, right? Like, we look at, like... The thing is, is if my... My parents are never going to move. My siblings are never going to come. Mm-hmm. However your dad is okay to come with us. Yeah. And I think if we could all be in one central location, that would be amazing. Yeah, especially for... The future. Well, yeah, the future. Yeah. So, it's it's just... It's just been crazy. It's been a crazy time. And yes. so now, um, we, we, we've been doing the podcast. And granted, we do this on our living room couch. So, there's no real... There's no real. Our, our cat's currently opening our entertainment center. He's guessing, that's has been his new thing. I'm guessing He's been he pushing wants to the play door open. The Wii, I'm guessing. <laughs> um, Sammy, you can't wee bowl. You don't have thumbs. That's <laughs> been his new thing. He's been sliding because it's like a little barn door. He just slides it right open. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, is he going to go? I thought he was going to continue. To, is he going to slide the other side now? Oh. oh, now he's up on the entertainment center. Hold on, let me get him down. You talk to this audience. Um, so the next thing we were going to go into is we started doing a little bit of a house project. Um, so in our home, we have we have a basement, and it's actually very nice. It's a finished basement. It has two sides. So like finished you, in nineteen seven. <laughs> so you come down the stairs, and there's a big open room with a nice wood panel wall. And then there's a little doorway. You go through, and there's like built-in shelves. Yeah. And our washer and dryer, our water heater. So it's like half of it's like storage and, you know, laundry. The other half is like a bonus room. Um, well, so our office stuff has been upstairs in for a while bedroom. in our second bedroom. However, we had this like big old plan. Like maybe we kind of move some stuff around downstairs, get some runner friendly flooring, runner friendly wallpaper for that <laughs> panel wall. And, we can move all our office stuff down there, and that can just be an office slash guest room. Because yeah. one upstairs, it can't be both. There's not enough room. There's not. But downstairs, there's plenty of room to have like a little pull out chair, couch, whatever, and our office stuff. So that's something we're really excited for. So Greg has been working really hard getting the floor down right now, and then we'll be doing the walls. Um, and from there, <laughs> sorry, our cat is acting silly, silly today. I'm um, getting back on the t- stand. But with that all being said and done, it's going to take some time. But he's doing a really good job down there. It looks good. Yeah, it's coming together. And I'm hoping to have it done this weekend. That would be great because um, I'm ready to get that stuff down. I'm ready to get the stuff down. So I'm hoping to at least get that done this weekend. And then, like, through the week, we can just start taking things down mm-hmm. there. Um, and the thing the thing that's cool is – and the reason we're talking about this is because, one, we record this on the couch. Yeah, and so we don't nice. we don't have access to a video camera. And if any of you who are from my stream know I stream in the guest bedroom, there's no real place to sit. There's no real place to actually have a discussion. It's literally locked yeah. in a corner. So with us getting some chairs downstairs and my camera being able to be movable with my PC down there, we're going to be able to start making video content on YouTube for the podcast. Oh, yeah. Which I am so excited for. I'm so excited because, for. Because, you know, we, we could sit opposite of each other mm-hmm. and this is just not a good setting. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, because one, you hear all the sounds. You can hear our cats messing with the blinds. You can hear us sitting here on the couch and yeah. breathing. And you hear every noise. And we can't even run the dishwasher if we're recording because you hear the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah. So th- it gives us a lot more opportunity to c- continue uh, this podcast. But and, and, expand and, a little more. And, and do more with it. Yeah. And and I've been really on the ball of, like, getting this stuff together, everything yeah. edited. Yeah. So, no, you've been so, doing amazing. So now, like, I'm... My next step is getting the graphics together for that and then also, like, getting this website up. Yeah. Like, getting our blog up and then we can start doing that. So, there's just a lot of house projects going on, especially, I mean, I'm getting the floor on now. Um, and after the flooring, I plan on working on the wall, getting that taken care of, and then getting everything down there in its place, looking decent. And then hopefully, hopefully, with very soon, by episode 10, I'm hoping, <laughs> with the, no, no guarantee yet, but by episode 10... 
I'm hoping that we can start doing video format. Yeah, we have um, to get those chairs. <laughs> yeah, which we have to get those chairs, which I think we're going to keep season one. And we're doing this in seasons. Why? Because I just think it makes why it more not? sense. Yeah, why not? <laughs> we're doing this. So season two will not start until we get it in video. That'd be perfect. So I think season one's yeah. going to be all the audio and mm-hmm. growing. And then you like it, it, then you get to see our, our lovely faces. Yeah. And if you've already seen my stream, then you know what I look like. <laughs> and if you've already been on Maggie's TikTok, then you know what then she looks like. So like, no matter where you come from, no matter what you do, like, it, I, I think video makes it mm-hmm. just more. Um, and, and that gives us more of an opportunity, too. And you know what? I think down the line, and this is just for, like, pipe dream stuff getting some people on here who can also give some advice and That'd information and stuff like yeah. that. Get, having a guest, having a third party, but taking that down to our basement and so making it easier. look presentable gives us a lot more options. Yeah. So, and do you have any more? No, no. Okay. Know. I was saying, and the big reason why we're moving to the basement is because we have a baby on the way. Uh, yes. A, <laughs> are, are we saying what it is? Yes. Um, we're having a girl. A baby girl. A baby girl is on the way. And this is very, very exciting news. Very exciting. So (laughs) that's the reason we've been jumping gun on this basement project because the spare bedroom is no longer going to be a spare bedroom. It's going to be our nursery. It's going to be our nursery. So this is all so very exciting. We never really got to go into our whole infertility story. I mean, we're only at 26 minutes. I mean, we can talk about it now if you want. Um, so, oh, where to begin? Um, I would say let's, let's start with, I think let's, let's make it known for you. I think this is important. And again, we can cut ourselves off at any time. Um, your birth control problem. Yeah. You've tried numerous. I tried, yes. I have tried, um, back in high school, I was on many different, just combo pills, um, caused a lot of issues, you know, traditional, you know, side effects, but. You have to weigh out your pros and cons. It made me very hormonal, made me very moody. My mom literally called me a monster one day. <laughs> um, it made it just made me rage, yeah. and um, it made me gain weight. My acne was getting worse. I was like, I just wasn't having a good time with it. And so we tried that for many, many, many years, and then I tried an IUD. I did not have a good experience with the IUD. I kept getting reincurrent of infections, and it eventually just needed to come out. Yeah. After that came out, I was like, I'm done. And so I talked about my options with, you know, my doctor, and she explained to me, you know, if you had issues with the pill, you're going to have issues with the implant. You're going to have issues with um, the shot, and you're going to have issues... Um, the patch just really isn't even, even that recommended, but you're going to have issues with that too. Yeah. So she was like, your only real options here is to try the the ring and to try another pill. Yeah. So I said, let's try the ring first. Literally had it for two days and it gave me the same issues the IUD did. Yeah. So that had to go. And then I was left with my last option, which was the mini pill. And I actually was on it for over a year. Yeah. I mean, it went well. It went well at first. And then all of a sudden something... Something changed. It just wasn't, I wasn't, I don't know how to describe it. Caused it caused you a lot of issues. I was having a lot of... Cramping. Cramping. Your periods got worse. Yeah, my periods got really bad. Um, and then that led us into our first um, early pr- pregnancy loss. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting pregnant on it, and we lost it really early. Um, they classify that as a chemical pregnancy before, I think it's before five weeks. Yeah. So we had lost our first baby. And that really just, I was like, I'm done. I can't take this pill anymore. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of like full throttled us into trying to conceive. Mm -hmm. So I think from that point, like we were kind of at an understanding of like, I'm ready to have a baby whenever you are. And like, and maybe I pushed you. I don't know. No, no. I I mean, there was definitely times where I was. You were like, I'm done. (laughs) Like, I was just like, can we just like talk about anything else at this point? Or can we just like, can we focus on anything else? And I just think, I don't know for most, I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh, in the minority here uh, to where I just, if something's going on for so long and so long, I'm just like, okay, this is, this is stagnant. Can we get some variety here? Yeah. Um, and I will admit that was something, and I think it was a variety of things. I think one, I was working in women's health. I was working in labor and delivery and postpartum. And then on top of, and I still am, but, and then on the other side of that, dealing with our own infertility and early losses, I, I couldn't 
focus on anything but this. Yeah. And with me just talking about it incessantly, you were like, please, leave me alone. (laughs) I was just, I was exhausted. But what I will say is that, so you went off birth control. In August. in, In August. And then we were just like, okay, whatever happens, happens, right? Yeah. And, like, not to get into details. Yeah. But, um, you know, we not, a couple of things happened, a couple early losses. Well, I will say, um, within two months of that, do you recall, I had gotten a call and they were like, you have PCOS, you need to go see a fertility doctor. Yeah. So, we actually got into a fertility doctor, and I will say, without it being a year, yeah. um, they had just said, like, listen, you have PCOS. It's going to be very hard for you to conceive. We're going to refer you to a specialist. Yeah. So we went and saw our first fertility doctor. And what a crap show that was. So. We won't throw anybody under the bus. No. But, but within August to December, um, they told me that I was too overweight. They were going to wait. They were waiting on me to lose weight before they did any sort of testing. Yeah. Uh, but they wanted me to see fetal maternal medicine because I was on um, antidepressants. Yeah. So we had our first appointment with um, fetal ter- maternal medicine, which is actually the day we got engaged. Right That's before, right, right yeah. before we got engaged, we were sitting in the car doing this appointment, and this man told me to stop trying to get pregnant, that I need to lose weight, and I'm going to have no motivation to do it after the baby. Yeah. It was such an ass. Like so literally, rude. well, he said I. I he said, are you still, are you actively trying? I said, yes. He's like, well, I wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was so rude. Um, so there was that. And then I'm, I'm just trying to recall the, uh, the like, the, how the timeline went. Well, so, so, we I can, so after that, we had another loss in January. Yeah. And then we had another one in March. And then we didn't have one for a hot minute. Yeah. And then, um, but then at that point, they just kept, like, moving the goalposts. They're like, call us when you lose weight. I lost weight. I called them. Call us when you lose more weight. Lost more weight. Called them. Call us when you lose more weight. Finally, I was like, I'm done. And I just was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And we took a solid three months of not doing anything. Oh, yeah. No, we just, like, just sat on it. And then I remember I was talking to my ladies at work, my coworkers about this, and they're like, no, no, no. Like, and one of them said, I actually have a friend who went through IVF and treatments through this other clinic there in yeah. Ohio. So we sought them out. Yeah. At this point, it was May. And we called them, and they right away got us in for testing. They did all the necessary testing. I had ultrasounds. I had an HSG, blood work, um, all genetic, of the things. Oh, genetic, genetic blood work. And then you, you know, you had your analysis and, and then you had blood work. Yeah. Which I found out, I mean, the blood work was really cool because like we found out, well, at least. We I, got to see our heritage. Yeah. Like which, our ethnicity. Which was, which was really cool. Yeah. And so then. I, I got to see like what level of what I was. And that was yeah, pretty cool to find out like really how, how much Viking I was. Yeah. Like Scandinavian and how much Italian. And, like that was really, really a nice little experience. Mm-hmm. And it was nice because they test for like over 300 genetic abnormalities and they said normally you're a carrier of one of those things we both came back as zero we're not a carrier for anything yeah so it was a super cool experience and like we had our blood work well amongst that blood work we discovered that i had a thyroid issue yes um so in discovering my thyroid issue we're starting to do medication for my thyroid we're doing medication because i was also in the pre-diabetic range yeah we're doing medicine for that and we well, discovered I think we did the blood work first the thyroid was before that yeah i feel like i found out before we moved to the clinic yeah i think so because i think what happened was is we both did blood work and then they did all the testing on you and was like okay oh, well, you're every- clean yeah so. like, everything looks fine so like maybe we should test your partner well, they were going to test you anyways. They were just holding off to... They were waiting yeah. to see what my stuff looked like. Yeah. So then th- that's when I went and got my analysis done. And we discovered... And we discovered I had a low count. And some wonky numbers with, like, morphology. Yeah, my morphology and, and mobili- motility. motility was off. So they were like, okay, well, let's try Maybe this. Maybe it was a fluke. <laughs> yeah. So they were like, well, pay us $200 to do this in a cup that you can do for free at home. But anyways... Um, They're like, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again, but they were like, here, here's some ideas. Take CoQ10, take some vitamins, mm-hmm. like try to see how and that we'll see works. see you in a month. And then they see me in a month, and then 
Everything did get a little better. Th- things got a little bit better. But still not what they wanted. But, like, they were like, yeah, this isn't what we want, so, like, we need to start figuring this out. Like, here's the thing. They were like, well, it's only been a month. Give it three months, and then we'll try this again. And then... But they said, in the meantime, we want you to go see urology. Yeah. And then we scheduled... We were calling around for urology. We scheduled urology. Um, and, be- well, before we seen urology, because they did say, hey, we'll just do another test, mm-hmm. I caught COVID. Yes. And we got COVID we in caught, August. We caught COVID in August because we were on vacation. First time I ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, you did an analysis. When I came back. When we came back. Yes. And those numbers were absolutely Those horrible. numbers were awful. It was the and worst one. that's when we went to see neurologists yeah, after that. Yeah, because we had seen him right after. Well, yeah. we had the appointment scheduled. It took a while to book out. Yeah. But we had gone to see him. And he, he, I want to say that was in September or October. I think it was... It had to be October. I think it was October, because I think... I, That's when we yeah. started stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, I it was... No, I feel like it was September, because I was on... Oh, because we started in October. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, September, we went to see him. He's like, hey, we're going to put you on a medication, put you on Clomid. And the reason I'm... He was like... He asked me, actually, he was like, do you even want to, or do you want to see if the vitamins are working? He goes, because I think your numbers were affected by the COVID. And no, I think we have our story wrong because he ordered another analysis. He did. So that's when we got the COVID numbers. It wasn't before we saw him. It was after. Yeah, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm so bad with time frames. No, it was after because he wanted to do repeat blood work because you had been on the vitamins for like yeah. months at this point. Yeah. So you wanted to do repeat pu- blood work and an analysis, but he didn't say anything about the COVID because honestly, I don't think we mentioned it. Yeah. So then you went and did the analysis again and the blood work and we found out your LH was low, yeah. which we knew. And no, your FSH was low. FSH, yeah. And then your testosterone was great, which we didn't think it was going to be a no, problem. No, as hairy as I am, I didn't think that was an issue. <laughs> and then the analysis was the worst one we've ever seen. And so, yeah, it was awful. I had nothing. So then at that worst. point, he had called and was like, here's our game plan. We're going to start you on um, this Clomid. Medic- yeah, Clomid. And that's a fertility medication, which if, you know, in women, you take it to help ovulate. In men, it helps increase count. So you had started on Cloma. They said it was going to be like a three month cycle just to see. But at this point, our clinic had told us IVF was our only option. Yes. They had said, you know, you guys have had, you know, your four early losses. The sperm count is not what we want. Here's what we're going to have to do. It was not what we wanted to hear, of course. But um, you had to be the one to tell them because I was crying during this appointment. I like, obviously I want, you know, I want to score our family and I want to do what we can do, but... We didn't have $30,000 to spend no, on IVF. No, and, and the thing was is that the, the urologist was like, hey, let's try this medication, mm-hmm. see what your numbers look like in three months. and Because then go you f- may be able to do a different procedure. Yeah, and he's like, then go from there. And the fact that the clinic – and the clinic was nice, don't get me wrong. But the clinic was like, uh, IVF your only option. I'm like, well, can we see – like this – to me, in healthcare – you should have a bunch of doctors working together yeah. to find the diagnosis. So one doctor saying, try it in three months. Hopefully things conceive naturally. Mm-hmm. If not, this might give you a better chance to an IUI. Yeah. And well, so that was our problem was the count was so low, they wouldn't even do an IUI because to their clinic standards, it was a waste of time and money. Yeah. Versus like if we would have gone with a different facility, they would have done it anyways, but it would have been less of a chance. Yeah. But... It was nice because he was like, well, our goal is you guys conceive at home. Yeah. But if not, at least get your numbers up high enough to do an IUI. And if all else fails, IVF IVF. is your option. But let's just try it. So they were like, okay, whatever. You know, you guys give it us a try. Give us a call in a couple months. Two months later. Two months later. (laughs) We're pregnant. We're pregnant. (laughs) Um, It was was really special. So. We are currently. We are almost 15 weeks pregnant. 15 weeks pregnant. Um, So we're in our second trimester now. The way we found out was so special. Yeah. So I, you know, I run my trying to conceive page. So I, you know, test early. But I was getting better at testing, you know, 11 days past ovulation, which they recommend. They recommend a little later, actually. But (laughs) whatever. And I just, you know, had a feeling and it was a Thursday morning, and it was I had clinical that morning. It's my last clinical day, actually, yeah. of the semester. And I remember I woke up early. I took three tests because I'm just in that case, and I like to compare. We have we have and, so and, many tests sitting upstairs. By the way, and I, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus here, but we have a Ziploc bag that is overfilled <laughs> with pregnancy tests. This lady and this this wonderful woman. <laughs> Had tested multiple times a day. Listen, for those of you out there, probably what 
10 weeks. weeks. Because let me tell you something. Those of you out there that have ever gone through infertility and have gone through pregnancy loss understand the reoccurrent testing. It's the affirmation that it's getting darker and the baby's doing okay. That's not really clinically an indication. No. But for us, it is. So, yeah. um, so it was a Thursday morning. I took three little strip tests, and I saw the faintest line I've ever seen. But it was a line. It was a line, and so you know we've gone through this before. Mm-hmm. We've gotten our faint lines. They get darker. We call to schedule a blood test. I start bleeding. We lost it. Yeah. So I was instantly, I was like, maybe I should wait. Maybe I should call because if I wait, then it's going to be the weekend. I said, you know what? Whatever. I text the clinic nurse and I say, hey, I got this faint test this morning. What should I do? She said, well, technically, like we're not doing treatments, but you know what? We're going to schedule a beta for you. Yeah. She's like, let me send you the order. Go get a drum. I go get a drum after clinical. Which after clinical, we go, we leave a little early. We do lunch. And I'm sitting through lunch just waiting. Like, I'm ready to get out of here. I got to go back to the hospital and get my blood drawn. So I go get my blood drawn and I'm like freaking out because we've been through this before. Most of the time, like there was a time before that I literally was in the office about to get my blood drawn started bleeding. Yeah. I was so anxious. And I go in, I get drawn, and the lady that's drawing me is actually pregnant. And she's like, I'll sprinkle some baby dust on (laughs) it for you. (laughs) And, um... And I just freaked out. But it was a stat order. So I knew I was going to get it within the hour. So I go home and I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I take more tests when I get home. They're (laughs) darker. And I was like, oh, my God. And so then I go wait and my results come in. So I record because I'm like, I need to, like, save every moment of this. And I open it up. We're freaking pregnant. Yeah. It was such a magical moment. So then I'm like, oh, my God. Like, how am I going to tell Greg? Like, he always told me he was not going to believe it until, like, we got a positive blood test. Yeah. And so then I was like, well, here it is. Like, so I set up our little board in the kitchen with mm. the little outfit. Yeah. And you came home and you were just so surprised. I was I was not <laughs> expecting because, like, I forget, like. I wasn't supposed to test for, like, three more days. Yeah. But I forget, like, I was just, like, coming up through the door talking about something. And then I just, what's this? And you're like, we're pregnant. I'm like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> I was like, we were on the phone and like, it was so. You come was, around. So you peek around the corner and you're like, what are you doing with that? Because you see the outfit we had just bought. In. Yeah. And I was like, come in. And so you come in, you're like, what? <laughs> it's like, we're pregnant. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was very surprising. And then, so find out we're pregnant Beta after beta after beta. And four betas. Oh my gosh. Just, and it was nerve wracking each time. Every time. Just so worrisome. Is it better? Is, Is it, it better? Worse? But you know what? Our doubling time was amazing. Everything. We were doing so good. Everything doubled. Sometimes felt like it tripled. Yeah. Like it yeah, was, it was doing amazing. Doing amazing. Uh, week six. Week five. Week. We were five and five. We had our first ultrasound. Okay. Five and five. Week five. Got our first ultrasound, just a little pee. It was literally a dot. <laughs> and it was too early to even have a heartbeat yet. Yeah, like, it was, it was just a little yolk sack. And I bawled. <laughs> like, I was like, then, you're so beautiful. <laughs> and then week, what was it? Week? It was week eight. Week we were eight. eight and two. We got to see something that resembled We got to baby. see a head, a body, and little limb buds. Little, little nubs. Limb buds. And then and her, we heard the heart rate for the first time. We heard time. the heart rate for and literally literally like, two seconds. And you, she told you to turn your camera off right before she played it. Yeah. And then she <laughs> said, what did she say? She said, she just goes, there's the heartbeat. And that was it. Yeah. And we then, heard it for two seconds. And she goes, it's one something. It was what? 174. She's like, it's 174. I'm like, how the hell do you even know? You heard because it, it counts. The like computer I, counts. Yeah, I get that. And so we were like, man, I wish they heard a heartbeat. Then we looked it up and the reason we did it, which was fine. And then, what was it? Week... So then, that was, like, amazing. We were so happy. We graduated. We graduated the clinic that day, and then we had our appointment already pre-scheduled. So week 11, we were 11 and 2, we saw our new OB, and we were able to see her. It was our first abdominal ultrasound. That was actually, we heard her on the Doppler, too. Yeah, we heard her on the Doppler. They used the Doppler in the office. We barely heard her, but we heard her. And then we saw her in the ultrasound, our abdominal scan, and she was just hanging out. On the bottom of the amniotic sac, like it was a little hammock, and she had her foot sticking straight up in the air, (laughs) her hand right in her face. But we saw a baby. But we saw, like, a full baby in there. (laughs) And 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 now we're 15 weeks long. So then that very next week, we got our NIPT drawn. Yeah. So we found out she has, like, no abnormal chromosomes, Um, everything looks good there, and that she's a girl. 
Yeah. And now we are 15 weeks. Um, we'll be 15 weeks this week, this weekend. And then next week I can get our neural tube stuff drawn. Mm -hmm. And then within the next week we go see the doctor again. We're not getting another ultrasound, but we'll hear it with the Doppler. Um, which we have at home. Which we have at home and we actually heard her last week. Yes. Um, which we only try to use once a week because I'm kind of anal about that. I don't want to like hurt no, her. No, here's the difference. She doesn't want to hurt her. But if she could use it every minute if of I every day. If I could use it every minute of every day, I absolutely would. She would have headphones in. I would be and walking Doppler, around. <laughs> but the thing is, duct tape to there's, her there's some research that like you're not supposed to use it all that often. You know what? To each their own. Like I, I, what do I know? I just had read a report about somebody that, like, was using it too much. Something happened. There's a risk in everything. I only like to use it for two minutes once a week. Yeah. Um, and as much as I would love to listen to her every minute of every day, it's not possible. And she no. would hate that. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. So, we'll get that blood work. We see the doctor again. We'll listen to her with the Doppler. And then we'll have our anatomy scan, which yes. we already know she's a girl. But it'll be cool because we'll get to see him. A bigger baby. A bigger baby. Because <laughs> she's the size of an orange right now. Yes. Um, yeah, so she's she's doing good. We're excited to get her nursery all together. Um, we're so excited that she's here. And it's just so... I cry all the time about how amazed I am by her. And this, this honestly, like... And, and, and not to put this into a business perspective, because I don't want to do that. But this has given us an opportunity to finally kick our ass into gear. Yeah. And get our basement done. And get, get our house together a little bit mm-hmm. more. Like, Because granted... We we don't we have an office, but we don't use it the way we intended to. Yeah. Because we're like, man, it's so much nicer just to sit on the couch. But the fact that the basement door is right there, we can go down and leave it open. And there's going to um, be chairs down there, yeah. and we're going to be able even to sit. bring her down there if we want. Yeah, like, like there's a lot of opportunities down there. So um, it'll it be just, nice to have an extra nice area in our home that can actually be utilized. Because before yeah. it was just kind of a catch all, like we were just yeah. throwing shit down there. But, it was um, a laundry. It was we went down there to do laundry, and that, and that and was all store, that room was. But it's nice extras. to finally have that room to be utilized because I mean, honestly, we probably won't live in this house long enough for her to have like a playroom. Yeah. But even if like she can use down there, yeah, like we'll just have to be down there with her. But yeah. there's there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot, and, and you know, I am just so excited. <laughs> and and hopefully, you know, at when videos come in, you'll be able to see Maggie's belly get bigger. And oh, yeah. It's already rounding out. It is. We're starting to see her. <laughs> it is. And, you know, getting getting some stuff. So, I'm, we're again, a lot of opportunity. A lot of stuff coming. A lot of things yeah. in the works. A lot of, this lot of a lot has happened since the last time we recorded an episode here. Yes. Um, and I think all for the better. All for the better, absolutely. This is such an exciting time in our lives. Oh, absolutely. I think, like, we're, like, we're literally... I have our countdown on my phone here. We are exactly three months and 26 days away from our wedding. And we are five months and 27 days away from meeting It is going to be here so quickly. It is happening so fast already. Like, the fact that we're almost into March. Um, but I'm scared. <laughs> granted, this will come out a little in March. But where we're recording now right now, the fact that it's, it's, um, it's like March... Is like right there. It's it's the fact that you know what the fact that we're in March. You're listening. The fact that we're in March is ridiculously fast. I know. And here's the thing: it took us so long to get pregnant. Yeah. And she is growing so fast, and it's flying by. I honestly am like, oh my gosh, this is going so fast. Yeah. Like we were just talking about it. They scheduled my anatomy scan for 20 weeks, and I was like. Oh, that's so far from now. I'm like, oh my god, that's literally in five weeks. <laughs> like, that's that's literally she's, a month away. That's yeah. she's literally a month from now. She's gonna be halfway baked. Like, yeah. which is just it's 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 so incredible. It's amazing and how experience. fast our wedding's coming up. Like, oh my gosh, last year, honestly, it felt a lot longer. But now we're in like the final countdown here. I'm like, oh my god, we this is like, happening. This is happening. Like, yeah. we gotta finish this up. And, and you know, and. That's the thing. It's like, I'm nervous as hell with graduating because I'm like, man, it's actually happening. Like, yeah. I didn't know if it would get there, you know. And, and I've been – I've had the luxury of fast-tracking my program mm-hmm. and getting a bachelor's done in two years and four or five months. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I can't complain. Um, but, man, it, what what a, what a life. What an experience. Um, there's a lot more we could dive into um, on many things, my you know my mother issue from last oh, time we yeah. brought that up. That'll be um, a long which, episode. That'll be a long episode. Um, and and there's a lot there's a lot in the works now that we have this this RSS feed. Now that we can start getting these things posted, 
every week for the next year at least um we have a year of that of that getting that website up you know we have we there's a lot of work i need to get done um and and that we just need to do and you know i'm trying to prepare it now because once the baby gets here that spare time that I can oh, work yeah, on you're things. Gonna feel like we're gonna be in the dark for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we're gonna try to keep pumping out episodes even when the baby's here. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be an adjustment period yeah. for sure. When I mean, like any new baby is an adjustment. Um, and for us being first time parents, it's definitely gonna be an adjustment. Yeah. I think with and oh, and that's the other thing. I'm still in school. Yeah, <laughs> and like, you're still in school. So I will, honestly, by the time she's here, I'm going to be about to go right back into school again yeah. for another semester. So it'll be, it'll definitely be a really rough adjustment. Yeah. But I'm hoping we get it smooth sailing. Yeah. Um, and trying to carve out an hour a week just to Oh, pump absolutely out an for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to pump out an episode. Just to just give to you guys. enjoy our time. Give, give you guys, you know, and, and this is nice. I do enjoy this. I enjoy sitting here having conversations with you. I mean, it's literally like, it just, it comes so natural. I mean, and, right before this, we were watching Shrek. Yeah. And talking about Shrek fla- 2. Yeah, Shrek 2. I'm talking about. It's a thong. Flowers and catering. <laughs> Is that this one? Is Shrek 2? Yes! The- okay. I know, but we're not going to be able to finish it tonight. Uh, uh, true. I mean, actually, if we turn it right back on, toss it. Yeah, because, I mean, we don't go to bed until about 10 minutes. Yeah, we got about another hour. Yeah. I got to do my shot. That works. Yeah. That works. It's a thong. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, you guys can follow me on Twitch. That's my only social media, at, at Hat Gallon. I stream at least every Sunday for a couple hours. Yep. Um, I've been enjoying getting back into that. And with that, down with downstairs opening back up, I might be able to return to my green screen, which, that I'm, would be fun. which I'm really looking forward to. I have that Elgato green screen set, yes, which I haven't sold. I have not used it. Well, it was supposed to sell it, and nobody, ha- I've not had a buyer. Nobody wants I, it's an expensive green screen, so I'm thinking about I'm thinking about using it for myself at this point, and and if somebody ever does want it, you know, sell it then. But right now, I think it'd be cool to, to cool to have myself. Um, so getting my green screen back is gonna be really cool. So you guys can follow me at Half Gallon. That's H A L F G A L L E N on Twitch, and and my only real public social media is my. TikTok and we are at ttc.baby.w. You plan on changing the name? I think once she's here, it'll be having baby <laughs> with baby W. <laughs> but I don't just post baby things on there. I do post things about like school and life and all of the things and we're just growing every day. So Yeah, look at you. Almost a hundred thousand likes. Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, I didn't even know you were doing that well. Yeah, I post every day. Yeah. I post every day. That's the thing. And I pump she, out a video she every has day. Been, here's the thing. When we first got together, you were talking about, like, you want to do this, you want to do that. I was like, well, you just got to stay consistent with it. I've put a video out every day And the fact that you've been consistent with it now. I think just, November. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, keep at it. Because I, I know, like, for me, that's one of the things. Like, I know how to make this stuff work. Yeah. I know the ins and outs, but it's, like, with myself, like... I can teach you how to do it, mm-hmm. but I don't have the motivation to do these things consistently. Yeah. Well, but I'm trying to get back into it because, like, I mean, I'm paying for this stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm paying for this stuff to pump out, and there's just so much potential here, and I think we have so much insight, yeah. and we have so much life experiences at it, the age we are at mm-hmm. that it's it, – it just if you if you take away, you're like, you know what? It's not just me. Hey, you know what? Somebody out there is, is doing it as well. I think just that – means more than anything oh, absolutely and for me it's not to grow a following it's honestly it's fun yeah i like making the videos i like the community i have a good set of followers who we literally just talk in the comments yeah and that's something i really enjoy so yeah so if you're here you might already know maggie's page you might be from maggie's page or you know me from twitch uh and all in all, thank you guys for listening. It was a great episode. Hopefully that hopefully the blog gets up very, very soon. I'm working on it, I promise. I know I keep saying stuff that we promised we were doing, but thank you know, roadblocks hey, happen. We're getting there. But hey, we're, we've gotten this far. And now we're, we're episode five. When we first started this, we barely could get past episode two. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll take that as a win. So Absolutely. thank you guys for listening. I'm Greg. And I'm Maggie. And thank you for listening to the Radio Now podcast. Thank you.